Before we begin this video, a couple of notes. First of all, Texan have introduced a new radio. It includes DAB, covers the FM, DAB, uh, AM and shortwave bands. Got a nice big display and that is currently in stock and I'll put a link below this video. Secondly, we've got a bit more information now on the new Zego G106 portable 5 watt all mode transceiver. It's looking very interesting indeed. Again, I'll put a link below this video so you can take a look on our website and if you wish, you can pre-order them. Delivery, we're not quite sure yet, um, probably about a month or so, but uh, you can always check with our sales guys. We are gonna take a look at antenna tuner units, particularly for beginners. Antenna tuning units. It's a subject which I haven't covered for some while. In fact, I've concentrated quite recently on various antennas. I've been messing about in the garden, as you may have noticed with some of the previous videos. Um, experimenting with antennas, testing this and testing that. But I have had quite a few um, comments or inquiries from viewers asking about antenna tuner units and particularly beginners because they don't fully understand whether they need one, why they need one, how to use it and particularly if they've got an antenna tuner unit in their transceiver why would they want an external one? They've seen the adverts and the websites advertising a wide range of external tuner units but surely if you've got one built into your transceiver you don't need another one well these are all quite logical questions to ask particularly if you're a beginner and uh, i can go back to my early days of ham radio when there's all sorts of questions that i really needed to ask in those days of course we didn't have the benefit of things like youtube and google we have today so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cover antenna tuner units for beginners. If you're an experienced ham operator, there won't be too much for you to learn here. But for beginners, there's a number of fundamental questions which I think need to be covered, and I'll try and cover them in this video. Now, before we cover the actual um, item, I should mention that every time I mention antenna tuner units, I get comments from people saying, well, it's not a tuner unit at all. Well, in fact, you, you are right. Um, but it's one of these titles that we're really stuck with and as long as we understand what it actually does then I don't think there's too much of a, of a problem. Uh, briefly, um, an antenna tuner unit doesn't tune the antenna. Uh, the only way to tune the antenna is at the point of the antenna itself by adjusting it. And it's been said that probably an antenna mashing unit is a more appropriate description. I'm not even sure that covers it because the only way to match a, uh, an antenna is at the feed point and the ATU, generally speaking but not always, is situated in the ham radio room at the point where the coax cable or whatever other feeder um, comes into the room and is, is connected to the transceiver. So I suppose the most accurate thing is a matching unit because it matches the reactants that it sees at the end of the coax cable or the, the open wire feeder. So, having covered that, I shall go back to the term ATU. Rather in the old days, when I can remember asking somebody, have you got a biro? And they'd give me a ballpoint pen, which wasn't a biro at all. But anyway, there we are. So, we're going to talk about antenna tuner units. Generally speaking, on the front of the transceiver, it's just labelled tuner. So what does, this, what does this box actually do? Now, first of all, why do you need an antenna tuner unit at all? Well, your transceiver is designed to work into a 50 ohm load. That's why we use 50 ohm coax, uh, generally speaking, in the ham radio um, hobby. If that transceiver is connected to a 50 ohm dummy load, it delivers all its power. It's very happy. There's no reactants at all, and it delivers its full power. If we erect a dipole, a simple single band dipole, 
in our garden and we feed it with 50 ohm coax. We've got a pretty good match. It's not a perfect match because the dipole is not 50 ohms, generally speaking, it's either higher or lower, but it's roughly about right. And you get a very low VSWR. And again, the transceiver is quite happy to deliver power into that antenna. It doesn't need an antenna tuner unit at all. You could switch it off and the transceiver will be more than happy to deliver its full power into your antenna. Now, your antenna has got a reson resonant frequency. Let's talk about 80 meters and perhaps you've resonated your antenna on 3.7 megahertz. And it, everything is, is fine. Now, if you were to tune your transceiver, turn your dial up to say 3.79 megahertz, you started to move away from the resonant frequency of the antenna. And the result is that the VSWR will start to rise. Now, if it rises to around about 1.6 or 1.7, there's not too much of a problem. You can get rid of it, of course, but if you haven't got an antenna tuner unit, it, it probably will still, the transceiver will still deliver full power. But as soon as we go above about 1.7, the transceiver doesn't really like things that much. And it starts to protect itself because a transceiver doesn't want to go into a, a high VSWR load, a highly reactive load. So it starts to protect itself and it produces power. And this is where the first problem arises and the first need for an antenna tuner unit is that once the VSWR starts to rise above about 1.7, it will start to protect itself. And it starts to protect itself pretty rapidly. When you get to two to one, it's quite noticeable that the power will start to drop. And if you go up to three to one VSWR, the power will be reduced quite dramatically. In other words, you're not going to be able to deliver the full power to your, to your antenna, not so much because of any loss, but because the transceiver is reducing power to protect itself. Most transceivers have got an internal antenna tuner unit, and that's when you need to switch your antenna tuner unit in. What actually happens then is the transceiver ATU will adjust itself so that the transceiver sees a good load. It doesn't change, and this is very important, it doesn't change the problem you may have on the coax cable because you've got a VSWR of say two to one because you're at the band edge. You have a two to one VSWR at the band edge, but the transceiver doesn't see that two to one VSWR because the antenna tuner unit or the matching unit has matched the reactance that it sees. So the transceiver is more than happy to deliver full power into the coax feed line. It doesn't alter the fact that there is a bit of loss on the feed line because of the VSWR, but the main thing is that the transceiver is delivering full power. So any, any loss you're getting is not because the transceiver is not delivering full power, it's because there's a small amount of loss on the coax cable. And at a two to one VSWR, the, the loss is very low indeed. So it's not too much of a problem. You're, you're talking about, well, less than one dB, generally speaking, on the HF bands, certainly the mid HF bands, up to 20 meters or so. Above that, it starts to rise a bit, but even so, on a, on a length of coax cable around about, what, 50 foot long, sorry, Imperial, um, you're gonna get a very small amount of loss indeed. So, your internal antenna tuner unit does its job, switch it in, and everybody will be happy. So there are two types of losses with a simple coax fed dipole. There's the loss on the coax cable, which an antenna tuner unit can't change. The only way to change that is to adjust the antenna itself. But there is the potential and probably greater loss that can occur as the VSWR rises and the power output of the trans transceiver is reduced. That is something the antenna tuner unit can completely remove. So far the internal antenna tuner unit has fulfilled its function. It's enabled your transceiver to match your antenna or to match the load that it sees at the feed point at the shack end. But if we use antennas like the G5RV, which notoriously has a somewhat higher VSWR on certain bands, the internal antenna tuner unit run, runs out of steam. It's only got a limited capability. And this is why you need to look sometimes at an external antenna tuner unit. 
The internal antenna tuner unit has a limited amount of capability and it varies from transceiver to transceiver. The Ellicraft range have got an excellent capability, but some of the other internal antenna tuners, even in current radios, run out of steam. And as soon as it sees a VSWR of around about four or five to one, it just cannot match it. So this is where you need an external antenna tuner unit. The antenna tuner adjusts itself so that you get a low VSWR. Now you can see that low VSWR on the internal VSWR meter of your transceiver if it's fitted with one. But most antenna tuner units have their own built-in VSWR meter which very often is more convenient and uh, that meter is the meter to watch as the macho unit does its task. Now there are two types of antenna tuner units. You can have an automatic one or a manual one. Manual one, as the name would suggest, you've got to manually adjust uh, uh, two or three controls until you get a low VSWR reading. And then you need to note those posi position of those controls so that you can go back to that position again for that particular antenna on that particular band. So you can start to see why an automatic antenna tuner is an attractive proposition because it does the job for you and it does it very, very quickly. And automatic antenna tuners tend to be more popular than the manual ones, although there are applications where a manual one uh, is, is more useful. And of course you can experiment a lot more with a manual one, so it's a really a matter of, matter of a personal choice. One byproduct of a, an external antenna tuner unit is that generally speaking you can attach more than one antenna to it and you can switch between one or other antennas and also possibly with a dummy load. It depends on the model. So one of the byproducts of having an external antenna tuner is that it also gives you an antenna selector switch which is a nice little freebie to have. One thing you must do though is only use one antenna tuner. You can't use them in series. In other words, you can't have your internal one on and your external one on because you'll be chasing your tail. So if you're using an external antenna tuner, do remember to switch off the internal one. Important point. Another reason for purchasing an external antenna tuner unit is that if you decide to use a linear amplifier to amplify your signal, then your internal ATU in your transceiver is going to be no good at all because you want the antenna tuner unit to be right at the point where the coax cable goes up to the antenna. And so if you've got an external uh, linear amplifier, then the antenna tuner unit needs to be after the amplifier. In other words, it needs to be after the output of the amplifier. Now, if you have a, an antenna system, a doublet, which is using open wire feeder back to the transceiver, then you'll almost certainly need an external antenna tuner. It is possible on some occasions to run that open wire feeder back to a one-to-one -one or a four-to-one ballon and plug it into your transceiver and hope that the internal ATU will match it, but it's unlikely. So if you're going to use a, uh, a, a, install a doublet with open wire feeder, then you will certainly need uh, um, a, a separate external antenna tuner which can connect to balance line. That really is uh, an essential requirement that you've got an antenna tuner that has a balanced line connection. Again, that can be either a manual tuner or an automatic tuner. Now, when it comes to buying an antenna tuner, uh, there's quite a lot of models on the market. Uh, one of the brand leaders is MFJ. They make uh, an excellent range of manual tuners and auto tuners. And if you go on our website, you'll see them all there, uh, different power levels, different features. Another excellent range is LDG, um, again from America, an excellent range of automatic antenna tuners. They, they don't do manual ones, they do some automatic ones, but they're very competitively priced. Um, they tend to use LED bar graphs, which I quite like because an LED bar graph is, is, is instant 
um, rather than following a, a meter with a, sometimes you've got a bit of a lag on a meter. So I like the LDG range and I've actually um, used one myself and have uh, done a review on the LDG range. Another excellent range of antenna tuners is Palstar, again made in America. Nicely engineered, they tend to be higher powered antenna tuner units, the sort of thing that you would use if you had a uh, linear amplifier. So I hope that uh, has given you some guide on antenna tuners. I have to tell you that we just heard that uh, Zigu brought out a new product. Yes, another new product called the NR1 noise reduction unit. I'm going to put up on the screen now a photo of that together with the X6100 and their new speaker system. Hopefully I'll do a video review very shortly on the NR1 noise reduction unit because that interests me a lot and I'm sure it'll interest you as well. So in the meantime, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. If you haven't subscribed, please, please press the button because that alerts you when there's some new videos coming up. And we are producing quite a lot of videos as you may have noticed. It's nice to have your company. Appreciate your support. You take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.